How you doing? This is Mr. Tiberi. Uh, what we're going to talk about right now is how to perform a running compression test. So right here, I've got a 2000 Chevy Prism, and we're going to uh, we're going to hook up a compression tester into a cylinder number one. And once we have it in there, we're going to go ahead and we're going to fire it up, and we're going to watch our compression gases while the engine is running. Okay. Now one of the first steps is we want to start up the engine, we want to warm it up to operating temperature. I've had it running for about 10 minutes, so it's pretty good and warm. We want to make sure that the rings are sealed up and everything's working good. Uh, the second step is we want to remove the spark plug, uh, spark plug wire or coil, in this case a uh, coil, and the spark plug from the cylinder number one that we're going to be testing. Uh, once that's removed, then we're going to take the spark plug and we can determine what sort of adapter we're going to need for our compression tester. So right here I got my compression tester, okay, here's my spark plug, okay. So what I'm going to do is take this threaded portion of the spark plug and I'm going to find the right adapter that corresponds to it. And right here, this one will work out just fine, okay. It's long enough and it's the right thread pitch and the same diameter, okay. So this is going to be my one to use. And here's my compression tester that I'm going to go ahead and hook up. So before I install this, what I want to do is I want to lubricate this black O-ring seal that's on here. I want to make sure that it's nice and oiled so that way it doesn't get dry and it doesn't crack out. Because then you can have compression loss through that gasket and it, that would pretty much make your entire test useless. So pull out the dipstick, take a little bit of oil off your dipstick, and then just rub it on that seal. That's all you got to do. Okay. It doesn't take a whole lot. Once that's done, you can go ahead and serve it into the cylinder. hand tight. Go ahead and put the dipstick back. Now that we're connected there, we we'll go ahead and take the compression gauge, attach it directly to the top of the hose. Okay, and now we're set up. Alright, now I'm going to cover this. Uh, we don't have to do this because we have coilover plugs, but if you had uh, spark plug wires, you would have to perform uh, this next step, which I'm going to demonstrate even with the coil. Let's say that you had your spark plug wire. You had four spark plug wires here and you had the one that was disconnected and you're going to start the engine. You can't just lay that spark plug wire off to the side. Same with an ignition coil. If it was still connected right here to the primary side, if I was to just take this coil and lay it down like that, it would still produce a spark inside and that spark would have to leave. It doesn't have a choice. And that spark is going to transfer through this plastic and it's going to come all the way out to here and it's going to arc to the ground right here on the valve cover. And the problem with that is, is it takes a whole lot of voltage in order for it to do that, more so than to jump the gap of the spark plug. So that'll actually burn up the coil. So while you're performing this test, you actually would be damaging your coil. And this is very important, especially when you're dealing with spark plug wires, because you don't have access to the primary side that would disable just one cylinder. Okay, it would disable all of them and then you would be able to perform this test. So here's your way around it. Okay? And you have two options. Option A, you could take a jumper lead and with this jumper lead you can go ahead and you, you can put it directly on the inside of your spark plug wire and take the other end and just connect it to a good bare metal ground. Okay? And then you're good to fire it up because the spark will then go through the wire, go straight to ground, and back to the battery, and that's fine. There's no problems with that, okay? So that's a good way to kill one of the cylinders, okay, when it comes to spark. Now, option B, and this is the option that I kind of prefer, is to use a spark tester, okay? So this way, while you're performing your running compression test, you can also see what sort of spark you have occurring inside of that cylinder as well. So we pop that guy on as best we can, and then we clip it on right here. All right. So now when we're doing our running compression test, I can see my compression gases and I can see my spark at the exact same time, which is a good way to do it. Now the next step, okay, because we're going to be running this car, the injectors are going to be firing. 
Now, what I don't want is I don't want raw fuel to be pumped into my compression gauge. Okay, so you have to disable the injector for that cylinder. Now, sometimes you can use a scan tool to perform this action, but you typically have to have the engine running in order to then select that cylinder. Um, so your best bet is to just go directly to the injector itself and disconnect it electrically. So we're going to do that. Go right here to the connector and pull it off. So now my number one fuel injector will not fire. No gas is going into the cylinder. My spark is going to occur over here. We're good to go. So the next step, we'll be firing it up and watching our compression gases. All right, so you can see right here, we take a look at our gauge. Try to hold it right there. We got about 100 PSI right here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give it a couple of uh, throttle snaps. So this is our reading at idle. Okay. So now I'm going to give it a couple throttle snaps and we're going to see where we're at. All right, so a couple of snaps that takes us all the way up to about 175 psi. We'll go ahead and wide open throttle, hold it for just a little bit. Okay, the reading is 200. So that's a pretty good reading. We'll go ahead and we'll shut it off now. Now these compression testers have valves on the inside of them, okay? And what happens is, when the pressure gets pushed inside, as soon as the pressure goes past the valve, the valve closes behind, closes behind it. So it locks the pressure in place. So hence, whatever reading you get at idle, it's fine, but as soon as you snap the throttle, it's gonna bump that pressure up and it won't allow it to drop back down, okay? So make sure you got an accurate idle reading. Oh, we got about 100 PSI at idle, which was a really respectable read. When we snapped the throttle you can see that the compression started to jump up and when we really goosed it uh, we went up to about 200 psi. Now you don't want to go bananas with the throttle or anything. We don't want to go absolutely nuts and try to hold it and bounce it off the rev limiter, okay? Because that's extremely detrimental to our engine, especially considering that we, we're not even firing one of the cylinders. So uh, be very careful when you do no load revs. So very short bursts. Okay. Now, we got all the way up to 200 PSI, which is a pretty good read. So if I was to go through with this and do every single cylinder, I want to see respectively the same thing across the board. Okay. But the close attention would be spent towards the idle reading at 100 PSI. Okay. We want to make sure that they all follow suit within that. All right. And the spark that we had occurring over here was beautiful. Couldn't ask for anything better than that. It is a nice, crisp blue spark. And with these spark testers right here, uh, you can usually buy them from OTC. Or there's other brands that sell them as well. Um, but these work exceptionally well, and you have to produce a spark of at least 25,000 volts in order to jump the gap inside of there, which makes these ideal for testing for ignition problems. Okay? So, go ahead and we'll disconnect all this stuff. Put our spark plug back in. Reconnect our fuel injector. There we go. And once our spark plug is back in, we'll just go ahead and we'll start it up again. We'll run it just to clear out that cylinder, make sure everything is good, shut it off, and then move on to our next cylinder. And then you would keep that progression going from cylinder to cylinder and we'll document right down for every single cylinder. Okay? So that's how you perform a running compression test. Thanks for watching.